Distractions in an image is a very broad brush statement, and it could include almost anything, I suppose. But one of the main distractions we have to deal with is dust marks in the skies of our images. But they're so simple to deal with these days using the spot healing brush, they're not really the sort of thing I want to draw attention to here. I'm talking about anything that may attract our attention in an image. Generally they're going to be small areas rather than large. And although we call them distractions, even that can be a little misleading. That seems to suggest that whatever it is, it's so interesting that it takes our attention away from the main subject. So at their worst I suppose they could do that, but more often than not, the distractions are not always blatantly obvious. They could be a lot of small highlights, but they can be slightly larger out-of-focus highlights as well. Sometimes it's just bits and pieces in the foreground that have picked up the light and turn out almost white in our picture. Let's look at a few typical examples and how to deal with them. But the image I have on screen here, I've already dealt with many of the minor distractions in this particular image. Now I said that some distractions are not always blatantly obvious, well I've removed quite a few from this picture, so I hope that by turning them on and off I can demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to go to my layers because I've corrected all of the little problems that I see, but I've done so on a new blank layer. All I used to fix all of these problems was the spot healing brush. But if I turn off the layer I created, you can see the original image and all of the little highlights and those straight edges which just been caused by bits of fallen grass rotting away around the edge. Now you can see what I mean when I said earlier on that some of the distractions are not always blatantly obvious and I think this is one of the things we have to almost train ourselves to look for and we do get better at it the more experienced we become. One of the subjects I found that suffers quite a bit from the problems we're discussing here are birds and animals because we can't be in control of where they land or where they're sitting and I think this one is a pretty good example of that. As a picture of a small bird goes it's pretty good it's not a small crop from a large image it's almost the entire frame but the distractions in the picture are pretty obvious we have the little twigs coming in here and to a probably lesser degree the one down in the bottom left corner. Now as this presently stands this could be a natural history picture but what I'm about to do next in some people's eyes would prevent it from becoming a natural history picture despite the fact that we're not going to touch the bird or the background in any way. So if you're one of those people that do think that what I'm about to do takes this from being natural history to just a straight photograph, then perhaps you're focusing a little bit too much on the competition angle of camera club competitions and less on the critiquing. Now the spot healing brush will do a good job here, so I've got it selected from the toolbox and I need to increase the size of the brush using the square bracket keys to the right of the letter P on the keyboard but then if we do the top one first click and drag a couple of touches just to take that smudge on the edge this one sometimes when it does the work it leaves a little smudge and if it does we just need to touch once or twice and soon we'll merge in the repair and this one here so it's pretty easy and quick to deal with the major distractions in this image and I think those sorts of things are pretty typical. In every competition I always see a batch of images which are spoilt in some way by something that's just sticking in the edge of the frame and could be dealt with in one or two seconds. But let's just take a look at that little bit of log or branch down at the bottom left. It's not vital to the picture, but let's deal with it anyway. 
This is a straight JPEG image. I've got it opened up straight into Photoshop. You can see it's a locked background layer. I'm going to pick up my lasso tool here and I'm going to draw a lasso shape, just a freehand one. And you can see what I'm doing, just going around the edge. Then I'm simply going to hit the delete key and we get a fill box pop up on the screen and from the contents make sure you select content aware and click OK. Hit Control D and I think we've got a pretty good repair. Now here I have an image of a ring tailed lemur. Nicely presented within the frame, good background again, good exposure, good colour. But there's some obvious distractions here. Well, first of all we've got what looks like a plastic band around that tree there. Now we're not trying to convince people this was shot in the wild, what the animal's sitting on gives that away. But it doesn't prevent us from dealing with some of these highlights. Now we can deal with them in Photoshop if we wish. What I mean is in the main screen of Photoshop using the spot healing brush and the healing brush. But we do have the opportunity to use some of the tools in RAW to do much the same. I'm going to go to the top of the screen, I'm going to select the spot removal tool. We know we get a nice big brush which we can increase using the square bracket keys by the letter P on the keyboard. So I'm going to make my brush just slightly bigger than, let's take the big highlight first. And I'm just going to click and allow Photoshop to do its work. Now that looks pretty good. But if we've got any doubt about the work that's been done, we can go down to the bottom right of the screen and turn off the overlay. Now sometimes I like to do that because if we're going to see any evidence of the work we've done, we are better able to do that with the overlay turned off. But I'm going to skip around and see if I can do one or two more of these. And I'm not going to make the, br the brush any bigger than I think it really needs to be, so we'll click there and that looks good. Let's try that one. That looks okay but you can always click a couple of times if you feel you've left some evidence and of course if it goes wrong and that one clearly has, doesn't very often do that but with, if it does show the overlays. You can just click the overlay you want make sure it livens up by showing you the red and the green colour then you can simply just delete it and have another go. Sometimes you may find it's better if you just increase the size of the brush nearby so you do sort of two spots in one. Remember once you've created these spots you can move both the area you want to fix and the area which is creating the fix if Photoshop doesn't get it right. Let's turn those overlays off again and do one or two others. There's this one here. I'm not suggesting that we have to do absolutely every one but I think it's prudent to do those that draw the eye the most and even now I'm probably going further than I really need to because I'm demonstrating the process. One other area which I'd like to deal with is that little splash of orange colour down at the bottom left against the green. It's not a big deal, but it is attracting my eye, so I'm going to deal with it. Now, we probably should pick up the zoom tool and zoom into this a little bit. I think that's not a bad idea. A couple of clicks and just give Photoshop a chance to enlarge it. Then I'm going to go back to the same tool I've just picked up and I'll make the brush a little smaller. But I'm just going to click and drag. I didn't get that quite right so I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. I'm just going to do it again. Remember I've got the overlay turned off. Now look at that. No one is going to spot that at all. Especially when we double click the hand and the image comes back to its normal size. Now let's turn our attention to that piece of plastic strap there. I suppose we could zoom in a little bit to that just to get a good idea and make sure that camera raw does a good job. Of course if it doesn't we can always take this into Photoshop and fix it there but let's take a look and see how it does. I'm going to pick up the spot removal tool again. I'll make the brush a little bit bigger here 
I think I'll turn on the overlay so you can see what's happening. I'm going to draw my overlay down to encompass the whole thing. Now you can see what Photoshop's done. It's taking a repair from the log over on the right hand side, but it hasn't quite got the level right. And you can see a problem down here. So I'm going to just move that up a little bit. And you can see, as I do so, my repair gets closer and closer. But you can see it's not exactly perfect because we've got a tapering branch here. So we could argue that on this score, this method is not working so well. So let me show you a better way to do this. Or I shouldn't say a better way. Let me show you a way that you can use when this method lets you down because most of the time it doesn't. So while I've got these two lit green and red I can hit the delete key and what we'll do now is open up the image or click OK to open up the image. I've already had it open once in Photoshop. So we're just adjusting all of the highlights and the changes I've just made. So when we're going to deal with something like that log on the left hand side what we can use is the spot healing brush we'll give that a try but even if that fails we can use copy and paste. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's pick up the spot healing brush. Now I've got a smart object here and you'll notice that that doesn't work on a smart object so I'm going to create a new blank layer over the top. Tick the box here to sample all of the layers. Adjust my brush. I'll do down to there and see how it does that bit. That looks OK. And now this bit. Well, a couple of touches and I think we would be more than happy with that repair. But let me show you the other way because it really is quick and simple. I'll drop that in the bin and there's the problem back with us. I'd pick up my lasso tool and I would select a little bit of the branch just alongside. I would refine the edge of that nothing like that though I want it something down to something like that just need to soften the edge a little bit I'm just looking at the area there to make sure I've got the softness I want it's not exact so okay to that now I can copy what's inside that selection to a new layer you can use your edit command at the top of the screen choosing copy and paste but control J is a nice shortcut and although nothing appears to have happened, it actually has because we've got a nice little patch sitting on another layer. Pick up your move tool and we can move the tree down into position and cover up the offending area. We've got a little bit down here which we could repair quite easily because once we're happy with the image here we could choose to flatten the image and then if I just zoom in a little bit down there I could quickly use my spot healing brush or even just the old-fashioned clone tool because it is becoming a little bit old-fashioned these days isn't it to just deal with these areas touching once or twice to make sure I get a good repair hasn't gone too well on that particular occasion I have to admit so let's go to the undo history go back to flatten the image and we'll use exactly the same option we had a few moments ago let's just make a selection of that area there refine the edge, use the same softness, Control J copies that, pick up the move tool, move it to the right, I still haven't got it quite right, what I've done there is I've not made my selection big enough. Let's go back to my undo, that selection there needed to be bigger, I'm not paying attention because I'm talking at the same time, so what I'm going to do is to just extend this, we just need to come down a little bit further, same refine edge, control J, pick up the move tool, move it into position. If it doesn't quite line up we can use our free transform tool to just give it a little tweak and a little shuffle around until we get a perfect result. Hit the tick on the options bar where there's a will there's a way. 
All of the tools that I've used so far are available in Lightroom, apart from, of course, making a selection and using that copy and paste technique. But here we have a fairly bold subject, but there are some distractions around this image. We have a slither of the wall there that's probably not helping, so that needs to come off. We've got a dog down there that needs to be cloned out. And we've got some little bright specks around here. They're not massive, but sometimes they can be a lot brighter than that. We have a splash of yellow over there, which I think is a bit distracting because it's overpowering the blue of the car to some degree. And of course we've got some people. This time let's select the healing brush, not the spot healing brush. They're both sort of semi-automatic tools, but the healing brush, the one I've selected here, needs us to define a source point. So if I go just above the dog and hit the ALT key, I can click to sample the brickwork, then I can come down, get things lined up and then paint, and we've got an instant repair. Pretty quick and easy. Let's just go to the crop tool and just lose that little slither of the wall, just that little bit. Everything else looks okay, I'll hit the enter key to commit that. So let's look at the foreground of our car. Now none of those highlights look, look really bad, but we're going to deal with them anyway. Given the nature of the foreground, it's going to be easy for the spot healing brush to do this. So let's just zoom in a little bit to the bottom left corner. And we can just click around here. Because of the texture in the background, it really is a cinch for Photoshop to do this work. Now these little small areas that I'm retouching here, as I said, none of them are really enormous. But nevertheless, when they're all combined, they do have an effect on the image. And it's only when you clone to a new blank layer and turn that layer on and off that you really appreciate sometimes just what damage highlights are doing. We have a corner on the left hand side. Well, we could try using this tool over on the corner, but we could turn to that content aware option too. Remember that was to select one of the selection tools, doesn't matter really which one, but I've been using the freehand lasso tool. Hit the delete key and select content aware as the option. Hit control D to remove the selection and we're done. We can move along, reselect our spot healing brush and retouch any of those which are showing up. Sometimes you'll find when you're doing this work that it's sometimes best to hit control zero from time to time, otherwise you can get a little bit too obsessed with this. So just deal with those that attract your attention, in other words, the bigger of those that are sitting around the car. But as you can see by the speed I'm working here, it's not difficult to do. And sometimes it could be just a, a problem with the paintwork, I mean we can deal with that. So we've got the foreground, the left side, done in no time. Let's turn our attention to the colour there. I could reduce the colour using the sponge tool. Grouped with the dodge and burn tool, we have a sponge tool. When we select the sponge tool, we can choose desaturate or saturate. So I could quite easily remove most of the yellow from that truck. But we do have quite a large white post in the foreground. I don't think that's doing a great deal of damage. But sometimes we do have other ways, and I've already demonstrated one of those. So let's try that again. Picking up my lasso tool here, I'm going to make a shape of that tree up there because I'm going to try to make the tree grow down over the offending parts of my image. Refine edge. I think that's probably going to be soft enough. Maybe I'll make it a bit more, but okay to that. So I can copy that to a new blank layer with Control J. Now I can simply bring that down and drop it into position. Now we've got a little bit of a smudge along the bottom there, which I don't think many people would really notice. But even if you did, here's the real easy way of dealing with it. Pick up your eraser tool, make yourself a brush which is a reasonable size, and I'm just going to brush that away, just to put back my straight edge. If you're familiar with layer masks, of course you've got that option too. 
Now if I take you to the layers you'll see that I've got two layers at the moment so to move this forward a little more I'm going to flatten that now I know it's good and we can turn to the last real distraction here which is the people and to be honest I think I'm gonna let the spot healing brush do that because we're getting a little bit soft over there I think this is gonna work no one's gonna know we've been at work on that right hand side it's just a smudge of bits and pieces we've got a little bit of green over here so perhaps I can show you how that sponge tool works we've got it set to desaturate 50 percent all I want to do is to go over this whoops I've got to make sure that I flatten the layer together first but you can see I can take the worst of that color away pretty quickly and there we have I think most of the distractions done one thing you'll notice when you do this sort of thing though is as you deal with some distractions of course it does make other ones stand out so if you've got one or two others and here we've got a tiny bit of light probably filtering through the trees then we'll deal with that too looking around the image I think we can call that done although there's a little bit of a mark on the mud guard there so I think I'll just repaint the car while I'm here there we have it so these types of distraction often get missed here we have one in Lightroom I've got the same sort of tool selected from here all I need to do is to just click and that's gone look at the hair that's sticking on the back of the animal just distracting us a little bit let's try a click and it's gone down there we've got a little streak and I'm not sure what that is we can click and fix that but if it doesn't get fixed properly use your undo history or I can use control Z here just make your brush a lot smaller because that is only a small streak then we can just paint a short line and we generally get a much better repair I mean we've got a little highlight up here with the hair we could try one big brush over the whole thing to see what happens because I think not too keen on that so I would be experimenting maybe with a smaller brush but just to wipe it over that light area there maybe I'd have to touch once or twice but I would take a little bit of care and before long I would get that fully fixed because then we're losing all of those distractions we've even got looks like a little bit of grass in the hair of the animal well we could take some trouble to remove that too just takes a few minutes but what a difference it makes to the picture it's attention to detail